A few days ago, I was visiting with PCA Grading Company. That's not PSA. PSA is a totally different company. This was PCA. You've probably never heard of them, and the reason for that is that they're a fairly new company. They've been around a couple years, but until recently, they didn't grade magic cards. They're just getting into magic cards. You could say magic cards aren't really their main focus because they did other stuff for a couple years, but they're entering the magic market. They want to grade some magic cards. Now, they're based in France, which is another reason you might not have heard of them if you're not in France, or at least in Europe. And the reason that's important uh, that they're in France, not that you haven't heard of them, is because international collectors of graded cards, they have trouble sometimes with custom fees when they're shipping their expensive card internationally to, to get graded. Well, not so much to get graded, but when, they, when it comes back to them. And they have customs fees issues sometimes. So on an expensive card, that can add up to a lot of money to pay, and it's an extra cost that they really shouldn't have to pay for something they already own. But that's just the way import-export works sometimes. you got to work around that, and it's a hassle. So um, grading companies are also over in Europe. They're companies that you may not have heard of before. So I was talking with, with PCA, and we were talking about, uh, we were talking about their quality control process, like how they check to make sure stuff's done correctly. Now, I don't really collect graded cards myself. I'm not into graded cards. Uh, I only have one graded card. You can see it right here. Yeah, right there, that one. So that was a gift to me from from Open Boosters, and uh, I. He signed it on the case. Opening is always priceless. It's his catchphrase that he says all the time. And uh, I think that's kind of funny because it's a sealed card. And it says opening is always priceless. I, I'm not going to open it, of course. I'm going to leave it sealed. But uh, I, I really appreciate that gift. Thank you, Open Boosters. Um, I, I've had a couple graded cards in the past. Uh, I did not know I was purchasing graded cards at the time. I just ordered some cards and they were sent to me and they happened to have been graded cards. They were beta sinkholes, and I open them and I play with them, so. Uh, yeah, so I'm not, I'm not a big fan of graded cards because you can't really shuffle them as easily. And I, I have a big collection of cards, and if I were to grade them all, they would take up a lot more space. So there's kind of a space issue there for me. Uh, but anyway, um, being a member of the, the misprint community and being interested in card authentication, that's where the grading companies interest me, because like whenever they make a mistake, I hear about it. So uh, it'll either show up in, in the misprint group as an error, or it will show up um, in one of the counterfeit authentication type places where people are, you know, questioning what's really going on. Uh, now in the, in the misprint group, we don't uh, approve those anymore. Uh, that's just because that it's been happening so often that, that grading companies make mistakes, which is it's a whole other video. We'll we'll do that later. Um, so anyway, uh, I was going over the the quality control process with uh, this new grading company, and it was an inter interesting conversation. Um, and I, they had a lot of good things to say. Really, I, I like their process. Um, I, I haven't seen much actual graded cards from them yet, or anything like that. So you know, who knows? how they're actually going to do, time will tell, but we could say I'm hopefully optimistic. Um, that's, that's not exactly an endorsement, because uh, we haven't seen anything yet, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. So, um, during that conversation, uh, someone asked me uh, what kind of tool I like to use to measure the thickness of a card. Now, you, you might be wondering, why anyone would want to measure the thickness of a card, and that's because it's uh, an authentication question. It's it's a way to check card stock to make sure it's the correct card stock. Uh, it's not the only way to check card stock. There's other ways, but it's one way that can be used. So if a card is the wrong thickness, you know, you, you can measure all different ways. You can measure the, the width of the card, the height of the card. You can measure the thickness of the card. That's the, the thinnest dimension. So, 
uh, that's something that can be measured and, and someone asked me what I like to use to measure that. Um, the main time that I would measure card thickness would be when checking for a rebacked card. The uh, rebacked cards are fairly prone to not being the right thickness. You could also check other types of counterfeit cards if they're just totally on the wrong card stock. There's, there's a chance they could have the wrong thickness. So this is a, an interesting test, um, but it's very important to have an accurate measuring tool. It's a, such a small measurement that it's, I guess it's easy to have an inaccurate result. So as with any authentication test, I like to, you know, use multiple different tests when, when coming to a conclusion. So, it's coming a little closer here. At Magic Fest Tampa, I bought a rebacked magic card. Now the vendor asked me not to mention this, so let's just keep this between us. So yeah, just to be on the safe side, I won't mention their name. But uh, yeah, I bought a rebacked magic card. Now, I wasn't uh, fooled or anything like that. I totally knew it was rebacked when I got it. And to be honest, I've been looking for one for quite a while and had a trouble, I had a hard time getting one. And the reason for that is, um, although I've found quite a few, the every time that I have found one, the person who owned it wanted to return it to get their money back, of course. So I've had a hard time getting one for myself. And I finally found someone who had had one for a long time, and they weren't able to get their money back. And so I helped them out with that. So this is either a collector's edition or an international collector's edition card, which you cannot tell from the back. So, um, in case you're not familiar with rebacked cards, what this is, is they've, they've taken a collector's edition or international collector's edition card and they have joined it they've altered it to go with a regular card back they didn't they didn't like erase the gold border or anything like that this is a totally different card back so they've they've shaved it down thinner and then they've adhered them together somehow um, a lot of times these will fail the light test, things like that. Um, I'll get into authenticating rebacks or like, proving they're fake uh, some other time. But this is going to be my, my sample here for today, since I have it. So, card thickness. There's a few different ways to measure card thickness. This is a popular tool. Here we go. This is a caliper. I love this tool. I use this quite a bit but not for magic cards. I use it uh, out in the garage. This measures thickness of stuff. If I wanted to measure how thick something was, I could just open this up, put it in here, all the way against the flat side, squeeze that down, and it shows me what the measurement is. This would be uh, 1.34 inches. This side over here, this measures the inside diameter. It's a little smaller, 1.272. And this end down here, this measures the depth of something. So just go like that. And now this, this dimension is displayed over here. That would be 1.385 roughly. So all of those measurements, uh, no matter where, which end of the tool you're using, they display here on the dial indicator, and also with these little marks. Now this this tool is in inches. It looks like it goes up to six inches, but it's not in sixteenths. It's in tenths of an inch. So they call that scale. It's a pretty cool tool. It's it's nice and accurate, and like I said, I use it all the time, mainly for for car stuff or sometimes fixing stuff around the house like this is this is just such a handy tool one of my favorite things to use it for is measuring the diameter of a hole or the diameter of something that I need to make a hole for so that I get the hole the right size 
So whenever I'm drilling or, or whatever. So as you can see, it gets pretty big. Like, looks like it goes out to six inches, which is way, way, way more than a magic card is thick. So there's a few problems with using this on magic cards. Uh, one of them is that it's huge for for the size of what you're measuring you're only using it just a little bit let's uh, let's go ahead and we'll try it out here so we have the tool and it is all the way closed and this little dial indicator here is at zero you see that the indicator moves when I open and close the tool so you open the tool a little bit you carefully put the card in and you close the tool that's the way it works and you can see on the dial indicator that it's no longer at zero. You can read that and see what the measurement is. Now, one of the interesting things uh, about this is that you can see it measures a good sized uh, portion of the card here. That's what halfway across the card or something. So, you know, pretty big area because kind of a cross section and uh, I'll talk about that more in a minute. The other thing that uh, it does, because it has such a large range, it's not quite as accurate as something that has a small range. Um, let's see, I try to how to ex explain that so you can understand a little better. Like, let's say you wanted to weigh something that weighed one ounce. You wouldn't use a scale that measures between one pound and a hundred pounds, because that scale can't measure an ounce. Now let's say you were trying to weigh something that weighed two pounds. A scale that measures between one pound and a hundred pounds, that's within its range, but it's way at the bottom end. So it might not quite be entirely accurate. Or basically you're, you're operating at the extreme end of what the tool is designed for. And that causes some issues sometimes. It makes it harder for the tool to read the, the measurement and sometimes it can make it harder for you to read the tool if you're looking at uh, a little dial gauge or something and it only moves just a little hair. Um, another thing that's uh, not quite so good about using a caliper on, on magic cards is that you are pinching the card a little bit with the tool to get it tight against the cardstock and you don't want to pinch your card right it also has some sharp edges this this one's metal you can get them in plastic and you could even use a file and, and knock the edges down a little bit and that, that'd be cool if you were really wanted to use one of these on something like cardstock which is a pretty soft surface but there's a better tool and that's what I'm here to show you today is the better tool this is a great tool, it's just not the tool for this. So, I'm going to show you something that I received in my mail day video, my, my first mail day video. I've only made one so far, but I'll probably make another one because I have a pile of unopened mail over there. So, we'll have some, some other mail day video uh, coming up at some point. So, this is something that I received in my first mail day video, and it came from Victor. It was a gift and uh, thank you again. I, I love this tool. This is amazing. So uh, anyone who wants to know what it is, this is a peacock and here is the info. Let's see if we can get that to focus. Dial thickness gauge 0 0.01 millimeter to 0.10, not 0.10, just 10. 0.01 millimeters to 10 millimeters. It says made in Japan over here. It's got the, the barcode and all that. It says Ozaki Manufacturing Company Limited. So that's what the tool is. And it is a wonderful tool. Here is what it looks like. This is going to be a little awkward for me because I have it facing the camera. I can't see it super well. And I'm not left handed. But uh, so this is this is for you. If I look a little awkward, that's why. So this is the way this works. You push this lever down and it moves the dial. Let me go really slow so you can see it move. 
I'll try to go really slow anyway. It looks like it's jumping around. That's because it's so sensitive. And the reason it's so sensitive is because it's measuring from nothing to 10 millimeters instead of measuring from nothing to six inches. So the, the scale of the tool, the range that it's meant to operate in, is better designed for measuring such a small dimension as the thickness of a card. That makes the dial easier to read, and in that way it makes it a, a more accurate result for, for the end. So it's, it's a pretty cool tool. This dial right here, this can be turned, you can rotate it, and that is so you can set zero to zero. So if it ever gets out of whack or anything, you can just spin that little dial, put it back at zero, and you're good to go. You could also set it at some uh, preset number if you wanted to, but that's, that's beyond the scope of what we're doing here. If you wanted to start at some number and measure a difference. So, it has these little feet here, and they're what touches the card. They're safer than the metal caliper. Also, it's spring-loaded, as you can see, so you're not applying any force to the card. I mean, not, not physically yourself. You're not squeezing the thing against the card. It's just this very gentle spring pressure. And one of the other cool things about that is that it's a constant pressure. Like, every measurement you make is the pressure of that spring. So the amount of pressure you apply isn't affecting your reading. So, let's have a look at this card. That's all there is to it. So, you can uh, see the difference there. Now, you probably shouldn't drag the card through the, the foot because you could potentially maybe scratch the surface of the card, you know, minorly. But uh, if it were a valuable card, you wouldn't want to do that. So, let's let's not just drag the thing through the card, even though this, this isn't a valuable card, because it's a reback. So we can measure different points of the card. Now that's that's where I was going earlier when I mentioned how large of a cross-section the caliper uh, affected of, of the card. When the caliper reads a large cross-section of the card, it's reading the thickest point of that entire area because the caliper can't close any further than the thickest point. Because this has a smaller footprint of an area that's affecting, you get a measurement that's that's only this little area instead of a measurement that's, you know, the whole cross section. So because you're measuring a, a smaller area, you can actually measure different areas of the card and see if you get different thicknesses in different parts of the card. Now that may sound kind of strange, like why would the card be different thicknesses in different areas? And it shouldn't be if it's professionally manufactured cardstock. However, a reback is two cards that have been filed down and reassembled. And that's usually not done with a professional machine. So you get thickness differences, or at least you can get thickness differences, across the surface area of the card. Like, let's say, that if they were sanding it down by hand or something, and you got maybe more pressure on your palm than on your fingers, or vice versa, then you could get one area thinner or thicker than the other part. And when that happens, uh, the card's maybe not quite even all the way across the surface. And this tool will detect that. So, that's about it. That's that's how the tool works. It's an awesome tool. Thank you, Victor. I love it. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks.